Uh, speaking of Tesla, Tesla stock has been on a tear and is consistently one of our Yahoo Finance trending tickers. And the street is still pretty bullish on the electric car maker's future. Joining us now to discuss where Tesla is going and where it may not go is Wedbush analyst Dan Ives. Dan, uh, I know we have the delivery numbers out from Tesla this morning. Look pretty good. But I'm more interested in your new price target. Your bull, part, bull case price target is $2,000. I think you're, uh, you woke a lot of people on Wall Street this morning with that note. How do you get to 2000 Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at these delivery numbers, it speaks to what I believe is on the horizon. I think you're looking at what's going to be a million delivery vehicles in the next two to three years. But the big piece is China. The China market, in our opinion, is worth three to four hundred dollars per share. And when you look at these numbers in 2Q, in light of a pandemic, Fremont standoff, and a backdrop like this, a 90,000 delivery number is a jaw dropper, in my opinion. So, Dan, explain to me why Tesla is doing so much better than the competition during this pandemic. Why were they able to pull a number out like this um, against a backdrop of coronavirus? Well, first off, it's pent up demand. And I think the big thing is really in China. China is the key because I think right now that's on a trajectory for about 100,000 units in the first year. So that is neutralizing some of the softness we saw in the U.S. and Europe. Well, Tesla, from an efficiency perspective, and we've seen this across the U.S. and Europe, I mean, you just have pent-up demand that's there along with the production capabilities that is now back to normal, even after the Fremont standoff, you know, in the first few months where, you know, their core artery was shut down. Danny Ness here, and you mentioned China. Neo came out with their delivery, but compared to Tesla, uh, Neo's numbers are so much smaller. Does Tesla not really have that much to worry about when it comes to competition in China? When it comes to Neo, yeah, it's a great question. And competition in China, it's pretty fierce, uh, of course. But I think what's starting to happen here, especially when you look at Giga Three in terms of everything in Shanghai, I, I believe Tesla's opportunity is you could start to look at two to 300,000 units per year when it starts to get to steady state. Now, having the factory there, the artery, and I think this is also the drum roll to what's gonna be the million mile battery that will be announced at Battery Day in September. So you put this together, that, that's why a big fundamental reason for what the stock's doing is China and I think that's why, in my opinion, $2,000 is the new bull case with China being a big piece of that. And I think you look at these numbers today, a major feather in the cap for the bulls. Dan, when I see your $2,000 price target, uh, I think what's coming down the line from, ele from in electric cars from General Motors, Ford has been talking about this month, Toyota are completely irrelevant and that Tesla has this market cornered. Is that correct? I think today, right now, it's Tesla's world and everyone else is paying rent on the EV market. Now, when you look at everything we're seeing on semis and look at pickup trucks as well, look, I mean, our estimates are Cybertruck pre-orders right now are close to 700,000. Now, of course, conversion is going to be the key there, but that's why you look at, you look at Cybertruck, you look at Model Y, you look at China. You get some of the other opportunities. Today, overall EV is still three to four percent penetrated globally. And what's the best play out there? Tesla. And that's why it's a scarcity value, why the stock continues to move higher. And I still think room to go. What's your take on Nikola? You know, we had um, Nikola's CEO on recently talking up their new their new truck. Um, is, does does Elon Musk have to worry at all about uh, about Nikola? I think Nikola, I think that's going to be another potential game changer product, and not just on Badger, but everything on the, on the semi-truck side. And, and I do think that becomes a legitimate competitor, especially on the pickup truck side, which is obviously with Badger. I think you guys see how pre-orders look over the next few months. Obviously, reservation just opened up this week. But I think it speaks to what Brian was asking before, is that right now, there's a window of opportunity here in a massive market. Who's going to define themselves? And that's obviously why Ford and GM and, of course, the European players, Porsche, BMW, and Mercedes, you know, are all going after this opportunity. But right now, 
if you look at this from from Norway to the U.S. to China, you know, Tesla's continuing to sort of own this market in a competitive mode. Part of it is the brand and of what Musk has built. It's that DNA. And I think that's something that continues to be pervasive. And that's what we saw in this quarter. Dan, while we have you here, I did want to talk some tech. Uh, we're about to get some uh, big time executives testifying in front of lawmakers, uh, Amazon, Google, uh, and Apple. How big a risk will these public floggings of these executives be to the stocks? Yeah, I think it will be more of a, what I would view as a headline risk, you know, as we sort of go into that. I think the bigger worry, if you get a Biden presidency and a Democratic controlled Senate, that's where you start to see some much sharper teeth from a regulator in terms of antitrust. Right now, you see it. Investors are shrugging it off, viewing it more as fines contained. And we're seeing that in the EU as well. But, but I do believe this becomes a bit more of a pronounced risk going into the fall. And, and I think some of those hearings will maybe highlight some of the, you know, what could be on the horizon. But this continues to be a Beltway versus Big Tech MME battle. Hey, Dan, that $2,000 price target, I just want to get back to Tesla, that you have on Tesla. What's the timeline for that? I view that in the next year. I mean, I, again, base case 1250. But if th- you start to think about Cybertruck coming on in 2022, you look at Model 3 deliveries ramping, you look where the EV market is. If Tesla continues on this trajectory, you know, they'll probably close to break even this quarter. They could be at 450,000 units this year. In a more normalized backdrop, you could start to be to 650, 700,000. A million units could start to come in two years. And I think that's something where if that happens, Tesla stock has a two in front of it. Dan, uh, you're, you're inching closer to Kathy Wood's uh, high price target over at ARC of 7,000. Look, and you, all, all, you got to give you know her and that team all the credit because obviously – you know, uh, they stuck through much criticism as Tesla when navigated these challenges. And you know, I think everything that, that, that Musk and Tesla has done is just, it's one of the more transformational stories I've seen in covering tech for, the, for 20 years. All right, let's leave it there. Wedbush is Dan Ives. Always good to speak with you. Have Thank a great you. weekend. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.